For you I live and for you I breathe I just want to please you cause Lord I love you And when this earth shall pass away Lord, and welcome to another episode of SOS Ministry. Um, it is such an absolute and profound privilege for me to have you join us here and just listen to a word from God, hear a word from God, and be encouraged and be edified and be fed spiritual food and be transformed in whatever way. Um, and today we're going to be talking about high stakes. High stakes. Stakes, and we're going to read as our foundational scripture 2 Samuel 11, verse 1 and 2. 2 Samuel 11, verse 1 and 2, and we'll be reading from the New International Version. And it says this In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbath. But David remained in Jerusalem. Two things I want us to focus on um, in this verse. It says, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent the leader of the army and sent the men of the Israelite army. And David stayed in Jerusalem. In that one verse of scripture, David made a mistake that would forever change his life. It would forever change the life of his generations and it would change the lives of those who are connected to him. Many of us know the story, David, because he didn't go to war where everybody else was at that time, he ended up lusting after Uriah's wife. Uriah, Uriah was off in the army fighting for the land. David was idle because he wasn't at war. He saw Bathsheba. He brought Bathsheba to her house, committed adultery. He ended up killing Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, because Bathsheba found out that she was pregnant. And the prophet Nathan came and pronounced a word word from God and a curse upon David and um, just talking about that the sword will never leave his house and how his children, his generations would be cursed and how they would take his wife and his concubines and they would sleep with them in plain sight of all Israel and how, you know, like the sword would rise up against him from his own house. All these curses simply because David made one decision that would that had so much attached to it not just for him but for the lives of those who were attached to him he made one decision that forever changed everything and everyone around him now i'm sure we all know that david was a man after god's own heart and david repented and we have psalm 51 which is such a beautiful and powerful psalm of of, of penitence and of repentance however we must also understand that sometimes the consequence of sin is not negotiable that even sometimes after we've repented we still have to live with some of the consequence that even sometimes after God has forgiven us and it doesn't mean that God hasn't forgiven us when we ask for forgiveness God forgives us but there are still some consequences that we live with sometimes and and what King David didn't realize was that he was playing a high stakes game David didn't realize that when he was making that one decision, you know what, my army is strong enough. I don't really have to, I don't really have to go out with this army. I trust my army. I know Joab and, and the other men, they can take down, they can, they can take this war. They can handle that. I don't need to be there. But that wasn't his role. That wasn't his, his calling that he was supposed to be in war as the king with his men. And he made one decision that would fatally change absolutely everything because he didn't realize he was playing a high stakes game. Now, high stakes is often used to describe a situation that has a lot of risk. So very risky situations, engaging in very risky things, you recognize that you are doing, you're engaging in something with a high stakes. And I want to compare life 
today with a high stakes game i believe that sometimes life is a high stakes game and there is so much to lose if we don't play well there is so much to lose if we don't live well There's so much to lose if we don't understand how much weighs on and how much relies on and how much is attached to the things that we're doing in any given moment the decisions that we're making in any given moment there is so much risk attached to that and so much to lose if we don't play well and so much to lose if we play loosely there's so much to lose if if in this game of life in this in this christian walk if we throw in the towel before we've come to the end of our journey if we throw in the towel or if we deviate from what god has ordained before his will is accomplished glory be to god then there's so much to lose there's a lot riding on your playing to win there's a lot riding on your plane to win. It's not a it's not a shocker that these things come upon us. Because the enemy recognizes how much we stand to lose if we don't play well, if we don't live well, if we don't live in alignment with the word and the will of God. There are some seasons in our lives where we do feel like letting go, where we do feel like, you know, just deviating. And sometimes it doesn't seem like a big thing. I just won't go to war this time. I've gone every other time, but I don't feel like going this time. Maybe I'm tired. Maybe, maybe it's too much effort. Maybe I just have so much faith in those around me that I don't think I need to be doing it as well but but we cannot afford we cannot afford to quit we cannot afford to stop we cannot afford to let go we cannot we cannot afford to stop praying we cannot afford to stop seeking God even when it feels like God isn't hearing or maybe God doesn't care or maybe God is God is God is saying no to us we still cannot relent on seeking desperately the heart and the mind of God we still cannot relent in following and hearing closely to the precepts of God because the moment we deviate there is so much to lose there is so much to lose David lost his entire family David lost his peace of mind the land was never the same again even after he repented glory be to God because every decision carries so much weight because the thing that we're doing is not just about us the life that we're living is not just about us so even when the battle has been hot for a long time we still cannot afford to give up we still cannot afford to throw in the, the towel we still cannot afford to let go because what we're seeking for has impact far beyond us what we're seeking for the decisions that we make in any given moment has impact and ramifications far beyond beyond us glory be to god so we cannot afford to pray little simple popcorn prayers and just stop glory be to god we must be unshakable and unmovable and always abounding in the things of god there are times when we set ourselves to pray about a certain thing and and I, I am sure it's happened to you You set yourself to pray about a certain thing and you're like okay I'm gonna fast and pray for a certain amount of time and God is saying the thing that you want <laughs> the stakes are so high and the thing goes so deep that you need to you need to stretch it out you need to go in for longer you need to go in harder you need to pray and fast because the stakes are so high and you cannot afford to mess everything up by stopping too soon when you stop too soon when you give up too quickly when you deviate when you compromise my god there's so much to lose glory be to god and if we're seeking something that we know is not in the heart and in the mind and in the will of god for our lives or for the season of our lives we must let go of it in order to stay focused we don't always recognize, but there are eyes that are upon you, child of God. There are eyes that are looking at you, looking at what, how you behave, looking at what you say, looking at the things that you do. There are people that are depending upon your walk with God. Some people who they may or may not be Christian, but they're looking at you, how you live your life. Are you going to give up? Are you going to throw in the towel? Are you going to curse God and die? What are you going to do, my God, when the, when, when it seems like the, the, the odds are stacked? against you what are you gonna do are you gonna give up are you gonna speak words of fear and doubt there's a baby in the faith that is looking at you you may or may not be aware of it but they but they're looking at you and somebody's 
faith may be, may be, may, somebody's faith may die. Somebody may, may divert because you don't stay the course. I know sometimes we underestimate and undermine, you know, the decisions that we make and the power that they carry, but you cannot afford to in this time because people get discouraged. Other saints get discouraged and fall off when they see somebody that they've been looking at fall off or not stay the course. It's not pretty, but it's a fact. If you have any sort of influence on anybody, even one person, it, it may even be a child, it may be a son or daughter, it may be a niece or nephew, and they know that you are a child of God, they know that you seek God, and they know that you're uncompromising, and then one of those days you do something or you say something and you behave in a certain way that is not in line with, with who God has called you to be, they see that and they get discouraged. You know how many people refuse to serve God because of the lives of those that they were living with or because of the lives of maybe other people in church or because of the disappointment and the ungodliness of, of parents or whatever it may be because people profess to be Christians and didn't live up to godly standards. There are so many people who are completely turned off by the, by, by the faith. This is a high stakes game and you cannot afford. You cannot afford to play loosely. We cannot afford. We're messing with people's deliverance when we play loosely. We're messing with people's breakthrough. Glory be to God when we don't understand that this is a high stakes game. We're messing with somebody's faith. We're messing with some people are looking at you and saying, if you can't do it, then I certainly can't do it. We need to walk the walk. We need to talk the talk. We need to live the life. Oh, glory be to God, everywhere that we go, my God, because there are people who are watching and this is high stakes. If we play carelessly, we bring reproach to the kingdom of God. If we play loosely, then we cause folks to reject Christ. We cause folks to reject the gospel. We cause folks to reject the church. We are called to walk humbly, but not to take ourselves lightly. We are called to walk humbly, but not to play or to live carelessly because there's way too much at stake. Disobedience is too big a risk to take. Disobedience is too big a risk to take because you never know what God is going to do or what God has planned, what God wants to do with your obedience. You cannot fathom the mind of God and refusal to walk in his will, refusal to allow his will to be done in your life even as it is in heaven is a risk that is too big to take. You cannot afford. You cannot afford. You cannot. We cannot afford to not live well in this high stakes game called life. God can sustain what he has ordained. And my encouragement to us all in the light of all that can be lost, in the light of all that can be destroyed, in the light of all that can be irreparably damaged, if we don't live well, we need to live well, live in obedience, stay aligned with the will of God, stay aligned with the word of God, the plan of God. Don't de deviate. Don't give up on God. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. Don't get distracted. There is too much at stake. The risk is too high and we simply cannot afford it. This is a high stakes game. So live well because every decision, everything you do has repercussions. God bless you and may you live in the light and in the power of God and may we live well to the glory of God in Jesus name. For you I live and for you I breathe. I just want to please you because Lord I love you.